everyone, and welcome to Artist Review. It's the last Wednesday of the month of January, and as you know, starting last year, we've now scheduled our Artist Review show as the last Wednesday of each month. Uh, it makes it easier for the artist, and uh, that way you know when you're watching, uh, you won't see a, a restaurant show for those who are strictly artist fans. Uh, we've got a... A lot of people coming up. We were, by doing it this way, we've got uh, almost the entire year booked up. So, uh, if you are a fan of the show, uh, please watch every every month. I think February we will not have a show because it's the uh, the day uh, we call, I believe it's Ash Wednesday, and even though the station might be open. Um, I won't be here because I have some medical things. So, uh, but March or March on. Tune us in if you're, if you're looking to see some great artwork for the future. And without uh, further ado, today we have a sculptor. You know, we've had a couple of sculptors last year, and uh, this young gentleman is a Tulane student I met uh, of all places and uh, getting a tire repaired. And he's uh, in school now, but been doing stuff on the side and exhibiting his work. And uh, some of it's a little quirky, but very appealing, both to all ages. So we thought we'd bring him in the studio, and we want you to welcome uh, Zach Jacobs. Welcome to the show. Hello. How are y'all doing today? Great. Great. Appreciate you coming, Zach. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're at Tulane. Uh, are you a native, or did you come to Tulane from somewhere else? I've been here my whole life. Uh, I was born and raised in Gentilly. Uh, All right. Grew up right by the lake. Is Gentilly still there for Gen you? Gentilly's still there for me and my family, yes. We just got finished rebuilding. It uh, took us four years, but we're back. Congratulations. We're glad Thank you, sir. Glad to hear it. So, uh, you, what year are you at Tulane? I'm a junior. Okay. That's and how long, when did you get interested in in sculpting and uh, in this whole uh, concept? Well, uh, sculpting was uh, always a thing of mine ever since I was a, a little boy. My dad would always let me take stuff apart and put it back together however I felt fit. Uh, my Lego kits never really uh, matched. <laughs> they always got scrambled up and made one big giant mega machine or whatever I wanted to build at the time. And it's kind of taken off from there. I learned how to weld, and uh, welding played a big part of that. It, it opened me to a lot of new doors, and uh, I started doing carpentry with one of my uncles, and my mm -hmm. uncle got me into doing a lot of different well, carpentry and stuff. Yours is a combination, some of them are functional art, I would say, and others just whimsical stuff. So, right. But again, all with a purpose, at least to entertain or for people to enjoy. So that's the key, and that's the whole whole crew of life. Anything else you want to tell us about your... Well, I know you want to tell everyone where they can see you, because you do exhibit at some of our neighborhood festivals on art markets, and uh, that way they can come and see you in person and touch the flesh and touch the uh, stuff. Uh, which which ones do you participate standardly? Uh, standardly, I'm in two markets. I'm at the the Ferret Street Market, and that's the first of the first Saturday of, of the month for everyone who for anyone who's not familiar with Ferret, and that's right off of Napoleon, one block off of Napoleon. And where else? I also do the the Broad Street Bazaar Market, and that's probably the newest. I think they've only had maybe three or four, and that's um, on Broad Street, uh, right by is it Bienville? Uh, um, I believe it's in the Robert's parking yeah. lot. Yeah, well, it used to originally. It was the old Swagman's right. shopping center. The Broad Street Bazaar has kind of grew up because the Mid-City Market, which is, uh, had phenomenal success and originally started on the corner of Tulane and Carrollton. And then after Katrina moved to City Park, and now it's really uh, no longer called the Mid-City Market, I don't believe, uh, and it's now held at Palmer Park. So by moving it so far out of the Mid-City area, it created this hole. So Broad Street, uh, some of the merchants got together, some of the restaurants and all, and decided to, to reinvent the wheel and have a new one, and it's growing uh, by leaps and bounds. Uh, in fact, I intended uh, last Saturday's one, and was glad to see it growing. It's got the same concepts of music, great food, and great arts and crafts for people to enjoy. So Remember, that's the first of the month, uh, first Saturday of the month and third Saturday of the month, so you can see Zach hopefully at either one or both in case you do participate all the uh, all the marketplaces. Okay, well, what we're going to do is actually uh, start taking a look. He's brought about 14 pieces today, and we start off with something that um, is, uh, I think, uh, very appropriate for New Orleans. The, uh, I guess you see them everywhere. And since post Katrina, before it was kind of a, it's always been the symbol of Louisiana on our flag and in New Orleans, but it's really gotten to be the hallmark of our recovery in our city, and that is the fleur de lis. And as you'll see, what um, 
Zach, um, tell us about this one. This is a very unusual one. It's made out of iron. Huh? Is that right? Yes, sir. It's uh, it's mostly iron. It's um, what it was is a, a old wrench that I salvaged. It was from so recycling uh, somebody's right. wrench. Huh? Right. I uh, I love to recycle things. All these pieces, parts that were on here were once something else. Uh, they've all gotten chopped up and reused. Excellent. I, uh, Excellent. I like now you. Yeah, it looks like at the bottom you've filed down the other edge so that they could be maybe stuck in the ground as yeah, a plan or something? That is correct. It can be either stuck in the ground as lawn art or it also has a hanging hole on the back for uh, ah, hanging hang it on the wall Thinking of well. everything. What, what may I ask were the other two pieces that form the uh, petals of the fleur de lis? These here, this was, um, they used to be a, a water pipe. It was a three-inch water pipe that I cut in half. Ah, very good. Very ingenious. This is an old piece of angle line for the bottom part here. Uh-huh. So there you go. What would you say? How tall is that and how wide is that piece about? It's about 12 inches tall and okay. probably about 8 inches wide. Very unusual. You know, uh, folks, we're seeing, like I say, Florida leaves everywhere made out of all kinds of things. So uh, this is a great one. If you don't like the natural rust color, which I really prefer, you certainly could... Uh, uh, flavor it with a color or multicolors and actually get in the spirit of them. I'm sure Zach could create one custom for you if you'd be interested in a, in a different shade or something like that, maybe even different materials. All right, let's go ahead and move a little further and see what your next thing. Now, next thing looks like something that um, you can buy at a store, but not really. Tell us about these frames. These are um, actually all salvaged wood. Uh, and most of the wood that I use is uh, old cypress and cedar and heart pine. I try to stick to old classical moldings, um, a lot of French and Spanish style moldings and stuff. The majority of the material that I use, some of it's pushing 200 years, 150 years old. Are these things you're actually buying or are you finding again? Exactly? The, the majority of them are salvaged. They're pulled out of houses that are either being demolished or reconstructed. So these are really permanent uh, symbols of New Orleans. Correct. And they're really great because people who once had these types of moldings in their houses, uh, they kind of miss them now that this, all this new construction is going on since Katrina. A lot of these aren't seen anymore. And it kind of brings back that old feel of your home when you have them back sure, in there. Sure. And uh, again, once again, they're in the natural uh, weathered look status, which is, is so important today. I mean, uh, nobody want, even though, you know, you could uh, decorate this with a color, but uh, I think they're just so beautiful in the natural state. Not only a symbol of what they've been through, but the years of toil. Now, again, if someone needed a particular size, you'd be able to accommodate Oh, these them. come in, I can make them any size. I have uh, lots of material to choose from. Uh, I've built them as big as four foot by six foot, and I've okay. built them as small as three inch by four inch. So you can customize, it's not just a standard that eight is, by 10 or three by five. You can do uh, other, some of these you show just because of display, but you can do whatever a person right. would want. These, these are standard size. This is an 11 by 14, and this is a, a six by eight. Um, the majority of the stuff that I sell at the markets are standard sizes, uh, 11 by 18, 8 by 10s. But if stuff. somebody had a family heirloom if, or paint something that really went was an unusual size, if they just bring you the dimensions and yes. you can tell you. Now, uh, and they could really have some, at that point, they could probably have some choices of woods oh, and all, right? Definitely. Um, when you get something custom made by me, I, I normally let people come by my shop. They can check out all the woods and different uh, stuff that I have going on in the Okay. Well, where is your, so your workshop is available for someone to come and visit? Well, and I, uh, my workshop technically is my garage and okay. behind my home. Nothing wrong uh, with that? Yeah, it's uh, it's uptown. It's on Valance Street. It's okay. uh, Valance and Dryads. Oh. Um, I wonder uh, you live so close to me. That's where we saw it, the uh, Thai store and Dryads. So, uh, well, again, what we'll do is um, maybe we'll give the number out at the end of the show and somebody needs to call you to make because I'm sure you don't want people just dropping in. Right. But at the same time, they could make an appointment. And, folks, if you're interested, uh, we're going to ask our director to, to put up our two telephone standard lines here because uh, I know last time we had a sculptor and we uh, got some interesting calls and a painter. So uh, don't hesitate if you'd like to call and speak to Zach about his work or any particular item you see or anything about the show, of course, we'll, I'll be happy to answer. So um, you got uh, 50, 45 minutes uh, left as we move forward. Now, the next thing is a little small items. Now, I believe you call this your business card holders, but uh, is that right? Let's take a look at that. Yes, sir. These are um, these are business card holders I make. I use, I use old doubloons as the base in them. And then uh, I use whatever type of wood I have at the time. Mostly uh, now, this one here do, is cypress. What do you do? I have some real friends, some friends who are just 
the balloon devotees, they would probably be horrified that you're desecrating their balloon by doing this. What well, do you say to them? Well, the way I make these, I actually don't. If you see the doubloons move around on the inside here, I don't, um, I don't cut the doubloons. I don't bend the doubloons. I don't do anything structurally to the balloons to harm them. They're actually just sitting in there free. They'll move around and everything. They're just sitting right in a groove. So if a doubloon collector came in one of your stands and saw a particular doubloon he or she wanted, uh, this would be a great idea. He could just take it out of the frame and put another thing or substitute with another thing. So he can right. add to his or her collection. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Is there any other purpose besides, I mean, someone really could just hang that on the wall, uh, as a, again, as, as an art piece as opposed to a business card, right? Right. They could, most definitely. And, uh, but so long as we hold it up again a little closer for the people to see. And let's look, so good, take a look at the other one, please, especially that one. I think the other one, which really kind of looks more like a stamp holder, because you've got a, uh, a press on it on the back, uh, is, is very, very interesting in, in its look, too, because that could be on someone's desk, and they could easily turn it over and make it into a card holder. So, again, an interesting concept and play on the... Uh, on the use of doubloons. Have you ever put any other substance in those at all besides doubloons? Or is it just, uh, uh, I've only been doing the balloons for the bottom half of them. Well, again, well, that uh, typical New Orleans couldn't be at a better time next month of Mardi Gras, so there's a great little souvenir. All right, let's see if we're going to move on a little bit, and then we're really getting into uh, another item. Which, now we're getting to something for... Uh, President kind of geared to the restaurant show. We, he's done a great deal on a wine and glass holders. So uh, everyone's getting their single bottle of wine. And what better than putting your, uh, this little collar? Let's take a look at it and uh, notice it holds just a couple of glasses. So it's not a complete wine set, but at the same time, for the normal uh, uh, family uh, of two, uh, uh, you and your loved one, to have a, a sip of wine, you just put it, put it on the collar. Tell us a little bit about it when they show. What it is is um, it's just a wine, a basic wine display. I can do these to match uh, houses. A lot of people have you know different stains in their homes. I do them in uh, many different stain varieties. Uh, some of them are hand painted with original designs on them. But basically, it's uh, just a presentation to hold two glasses to keep them uh, mm -hmm. keep them pretty on a shelf. Okay, keep that thought. We have we do have a caller on the line. Uh, welcome to Artist Review. We got Zach Jacobs here with us. Who's on the phone, please? Uh, yes, this is Tom King. Okay, Tom, how are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Very good. We appreciate you taking the time to call. What can we help you with? Uh, yeah, I was wondering if that was the original paint that's on those frames or if that's something that he does to make it look more antique. I believe he said it was original on those, it, right? It is original paint on the frames. Uh, I try to keep all the original stuff right. going on. I, uh, I keep it for what it is. If it's flaking, uh, I try to break the big flakes right. off, and then I'll go about and uh, try to preserve as much as possible. Sure. And you, as you know, all antiques today, that really is, in the old days, everything had to be refinished and shined and polished. Just the opposite. Today, the authenticity of a, of a true piece is the wear and tear of the true age, not artificial aging. So, uh, And I'm sure he could get some new wood for you, but I think he's... Uh, Really looking at recycling and and devil day. And again, he's uh, he's not going to turn away a customer. So if you want to slab a color on top of that, I'm sure he'd accommodate you as well. Oh no, I don't I don't want a color. I, I'm in love with it. I think it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Where was it again that I go to get some stuff? Okay, uh, if you're interested in Zach's work, uh, uh, are you familiar with the art markets that we have now in the city? The first one is at the Ferret Marketplace, and that's the first Saturday of the month. That's one block off of Napoleon on Ferret. Do you know where that is? Uh, I do. Okay, well, that runs most of the day. I think from 11 to 4 or 5, there's all kinds of stuff, music, food, and 40 or 50 different booths. And the other one is the third Saturday of the month, which is a smaller one, just growing, because it's only about four. And that's the Broad Street Bazaar, which is on the corner of, I believe it's Broad in Bienville or Iberville. It's right where the old Swagmans or then Robert's. In fact, it's actually in their lot. They've taken the parking lot and subdivided for all the vendors. Wonderful. Well, okay. I look forward to seeing some more of Zach's work. Tell him it's very nice. Thank you. Appreciate you calling. Take care. All right. Okay. So that's great for Zach. See, somebody likes your work. We know that. And I think those frames are a big, big hit. And you're keeping in the right venue by doing local stuff, functional stuff, New Orleans-related stuff. Now, we're going to take a look at one more thing. So we were all talking about the wine. I don't know if we finished that or not. I know you said... Uh, 
You do some in just the plain woods, the etch, but you, again, would customize that color-wise or anything someone would like, right? Right. They can be stained to almost any color out there. If you have a special color on the wood at your house, I can uh, I paint to match, um, custom hand-painted, and so on and so forth. Sure. And what's neat about this, you just... Uh, you don't have to have a large place to display it. Like I said, whatever is your favorite wine or the current wine you're drinking, just put it on the table or wherever you got and put the collar around it and put two glasses. And uh, whenever somebody comes by, you're ready, you're ready to partake, eh? Yes. Okay, Zach, let's go and uh, we've got, uh, oh, we got another collar. Wow, I'm getting fancy here. Okay, welcome to Artist Review. You're speaking to Zach Jacobs and Bob Bachelman. Who's on the phone? This is Mike. Mike? Yes, what, where are you calling from? What area? I'm, call, I'm calling from uh, the Broadmoor part of Uptown. Oh, great. Well, you know where you know where the Fred Market is, and you all have a great marketplace too, don't you? Yes, sir. When is yours? I have to admit I've missed yours, so it must conflict with something else I do. Actually, you know what? I actually have never actually gone down. Oh, to my God. Shame to on you. Not that one. Shame on you. How are you going to help yeah. my recovery? I what, know. Well, go ahead and ask the question of Jack. We don't want to take it out on our, our viewers here. All right. Well, no problem. I was just wondering how much do those frames go for? Well, really you know, we're it. on a non-commercial station, so that doesn't allow us to discuss prices. But you can do one of two things. One, uh, um, at the end of the show, you could call back right away on the same number, and the director will let you speak directly to Zach. Or at the end of the show, we will publish his number his phone number so that way you can speak to him or maybe come to his shop you know make your selection if you want to look at what he's already got made or if you have a particular custom order rather than waiting you know, for a particular market so how about that all right all right well thank you so much I'll thank you for today. calling thanks for viewing no okay problem. oh my goodness this is what's the day everybody's at home what's the, what's the deal it must be the, the bad weather the snow's coming next tuesday okay who's on the phone please this is zach jacobs and bob bockelman this is Alex. Alan? Uptown. And where are you calling from? What area, Alan? Uptown. Uptown, that University a boy. District. Okay, what can, what can we help you with? Well, I was wondering uh, what time the market was open from on uh, Ferret on the, was it, was it a Saturday or Sunday? Uh, Ferret Market is a Saturday. I think all of them are Saturdays. I don't all think any of them uh, is hold over to Sunday. Uh, it's I say it's an all-day fair, but really it's a half-day fair. It starts... Uh, Great. Some, uh, Do they have food? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Not just one. What happens, and this is why it's such an economic developer for those who, who followed our redevelopment, if you remember what Blakely started about the 17 neighborhood zones, this was one of the real small urban or economic developments whereby you get all the different uh, vendors that do different things in the area, put them together, add a few other elements, and open it to the public. So it's like... So all the restaurants, I know like at the Fred Street Market, there's a wonderful, for those who love soul food, the old Corrine Dunbar's. Corrine had her own restaurant on Fred for maybe 50 years. We had her on a show many years ago celebrating her anniversary. But unfortunately, there was a deluge called Katrina, and she hasn't really gotten back. She's still got her new location, but it's uptown at uh, Dominican. But there's numerous caterers, there's other restaurants, nice. there's cl clothiers, painters, so it almost, and, and then let's free music. There's usually, at Ferret, they usually have two stages of music. It's so large. So, uh, But it starts around 11. Some of them start at noon, but I think most of them start at 11 to go to right about 5, 4 or 5, Perfect. depending on, uh, you know, traffic and, and weather. And one last question. Does sure. Zach have an email address? That, uh, ah, good question. He doesn't, he doesn't have a website because we would have broadcast that. But what about an that's, email address? But yeah, I'm sure he does that. I do, so have, Zach, a, I do have an email. It's a, it's a two-lane email. It's zjacobs, it's Z-J-A-C-O-B-S, at tulane.edu. And Tulane's not going to have a problem with you uh, uh, no, it's our, using that for other purposes. Students okay. have their private accounts. So that's accounts. Z as in Zorro, or Zach, like we have him here, Jacobs, J-A-C-O-B-S, at Tulane.edu, which is, of course, the well, university. Thank you. thank you, Zach. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Dick. Thank you. Appreciate you watching. Okay, let's see if we can move forward. Uh, the next thing is really subject function. I know uh, Zach talked about getting into carpentry, and obviously we've seen some of that handiwork with the frames. But uh, this is something that really every good carpenter or every home home carpenter would certainly recognize, and that's, I guess, a toolbox, huh? Eh? That is right. Uh, this is a, a wooden toolbox that I built. It's, um, it's made from all salvaged wood. 
the inspiration that kind of started these was this uh, cypress closet rod that I found. Ah, and this so was, it's tree of cypress up that, there. That is cypress. That's a cypress handle on there. And uh, these boards on the side are old cypress house boards that have uh, salvaged. Oh, actually, weather boards from the side of the house. That is, that is correct. Wow. And um, all the wood here is all salvaged, like I said. Uh -huh. And... Um, you know, it's very sturdy. It's not going anywhere. I normally use this as my stool at the markets. I'll sit on one. Wow. So that, that testimony to the to the durability of it. But I tell you, I know we have some, la I hope we have some ladies out there watching today, but I know we usually do. And they might look at that and see a totally different use. And I would think that would be great planner. Or, uh, Garden Especially box. for like, uh, uh, what do you call those boxes on the, on the windowsills, on the railings? Right, right. It would be great. It would be great for an indoor plant. Or a little herb garden nowadays. The big thing: grow your own herbs because it's so portable. You can carry it from room to room. So there you go, folks. Whether you, whether you're a homemade carpenter or whether you want to use it for decorative taste, uh, you got double entry there. Okay. Now again, we're talking to Zach Jacobs, a Tulane student who's doing a lot of functional art using a lot of restorative uh, materials that he's either finding uh, in in our neighborhoods. Uh, he, he's not taking things improperly, but anything he can find that's certainly available, he's certainly putting it back to good use. So what better way of recycling and bringing back our city to put it in something functional or aesthetic for you to reuse in your house or somewhere in your property or even in your office. Okay, now we're going to take a look at a couple of things that uh, I'm holding for Zach. And you got it again. We're talking about the fleur de lis motif. We've got two of them here. We'll bring this up, and uh, I tell him this looks like a little uh, altar, a uh, water fountain altar, but I mean, uh, it's got a beautiful uh, show tape. It's got a little recessed well here in it, so I think if it wouldn't be dangerous, it would be great to put a couple of those Tilo candles there and be a beautiful piece to, that he could either hang. I don't see a thing on the back to hang, but certainly could stand on a, a ledge, and I'm sure you could put a little hook on the back. Tell us a little bit about this piece. That piece I made, it was uh, it's to mount up either on a mantle or a table, like you said. Uh, you can, uh, they have a the pocket on the inside. You can put almost pretty much anything, ink pens or business cards or like tea candles would be very nice on it. I make uh, two styles. I make the, the ones that sit flat on a table or the ones that hang from the wall. Okay. Now what type of woods, especially where you've done the floor de lis what, what's going on there? Well, the floor de lis is just a uh, plain pine, but mm -hmm. the wood surrounding it is all salvaged wood. It's um, mm -hmm. mostly beaded board from old houses, okay. um, some baseboards. And, but the uh, floor de lis is it painted on there, or is that stencil? That is a, that's carved. That is oh, a carving into me. the wood. That's what I was trying to get, get out of you. That you, you did the carving, right? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, okay. You hesitated there. I thought you were going to tell me no. You have someone else doing it. Well, that's what's so impressive, folks. It's got a beautiful design here on the, truly a beautiful floor de lis and a great, great looking pattern. And we've got a larger one as well here. I'm going to pick this one up, put this one down for you. Okay. And now this one, notice that this is a hanging one. It's got a little hang thing in the back. Whoop. Uh, looks almost like a little birdhouse, but I guess this is. Uh, molding? Uh, yeah, that's old crown. Again. They call it uh, crown or cove molding. Cove, yeah, molding, yeah. great. And then uh, the boards on the side, that's actually heart pine uh, uh, baseboards that came on out of the house. Okay. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And again, the pine in the center with the floor. Now, this time you've got a little more curved thing, so it might not hold as easily the... Um, right. The candle. Some, but I'm sure you can find something to use. Again, it's very decorative, Okay. So there we're getting a good use of the floor de lis. Now let's see if we're going to, now we're actually getting into something, and I think we have several of these. I know we're going to have, uh, and so old time, I know back in the old days, was very, very popular around the Renaissance, uh, what they call shadow boxes. And it still came all the way up to the 50s, but as people got older, I think they no longer use them. But I think you brought them back in a beautiful thing by taking uh, frames. Let's see if we can get this one up here. Again, this is hangable. His name on the back, 2008. Tell us about this. How we create what we got on the inside there. And notice that's what a shadow box is. It's basically a frame piece, but with a deep inset for something that is three-dimensional as opposed to being flat. So that way uh, it can be still framed and hung as a piece of work. 
uh, in a three-dimensional mode. Tell us, is there a title of this, or tell us what you got going this all is, on in here. This is called Gone Fishing. Um, Gone Fishing, all right. Gone fishing. I like it's, that a, one. it's a lot of old uh, fishing uh, souvenirs and nostalgia. Um, it looks like a lure. We got a fish there with some hooks. Right. What else we got? Uh, the mm -hmm. bottom, the two men standing at the bottom, those are yeah, actually those? Uh, those are Captain Sultan, Captain Salty, and uh, Skipper Pepper. Wow. And they're salt and pepper. You could have your own cartoons. So I know some animators here would love to have those cartoon characters, right? Well, they're what? actually uh, salt and pepper shakers. Wow. So they're not, oh, I see. So it's not really just fish, just fish related, huh? Right, right. Cool. They, uh, really cool. They kind of went with the theme, and I kind of uh, rolled with it, and... I think they came out now excellent. What, for the people out there, what size is this about? That's uh, an that? 11 by 14 frame. 11 by 14. Again, the frame is uh, molding. Is it more molding? Or that, is is it? A, that is actually molding off of a house. And then uh, the recessed back part is an uh, old beaded board out of a house. Ah, okay. And again, he's already got the nice little wire and uh, hangable thing for you to hang. But... You know, I'm sure you could find a place. It really is a cool item. So, uh, and again, it's more masculine, I guess, for some people. So uh, maybe it'd be a great, even though early, maybe a great Father's Day gift. But uh, I'm sure you can do again. Somebody who has a particular motif, I'm sure you can find some things, or maybe they can bring you some things, and then you can Definitely. create the thing for it. So I do, uh, I do do collages. If you have items that you'd want in a shadow box, I can totally do collages for you. I use a a, a safe glue. It's um it's used in uh, doing automotive repairs and stuff, uh -huh. and it doesn't peel like say like super glue would. So you can uh, glue things in it without having the fear of losing the item forever. You can take them out if you want to take the glue off. The glue is totally removable. Great. Well, folks, we're talking again to Zach Jacobs. Don't hesitate. We've gotten back-to-back -back calls. Triple-headed today is great. So uh, if you want to ask Zach any questions about any of the items you've seen so far or anticipate any of the questions, again, hopefully we've got him uh, identified where he can be seen to show the stuff. Seems like there's a lot of interest, certainly among the guys. Hopefully, some female. Well, the next one, is a real good friend of mine, Mardi Gras buffs. I think this shadow bo shadow box is really going to be appealing to all the sexes. So, tell us uh, tell us about this particular one, please. This box was um, it's called Mar Mardi Gras, is the name of it, and it's uh, a well as well as the other one. It's old beaded board. Um, okay, around the outside around beaded board. Around the outside, that's correct. And, and what uh, we got on the inside there? On the inside there, I have a uh, an old Rex beads, and I have a set of old Atlas beads. Wow, I these have, could really be valuable. Your old Rex, and now what about that huge mask? You didn't make that mask. No, so the mask, that's a porcelain mask in there. I it's, thought it looked um, it's got a great shine. I'm glad it's not plastic. That's beautiful. Uh, it's porcelain. And what else? Anything else in there? We have um, a couple of old coins uh, and some old beads from around the 70s when the beads were actually on a string and you can take them loose and do other the glass things. beads? Because of the glass beads? No, those are actually plastic. Oh, plastic. They're not, they're not okay. old enough to be glass. Okay. Okay. But still, what a great... So you see, uh, this is really showing a little bit more of the... Uh uh, not that the others aren't artistic, but a softer side for the ladies as well as the guys, and really much more art than function here. So we're getting, uh, even though we're recycling and doing a beautiful job of it, at the same time, this certainly would be the uh, uh, real nice addition to you all. Well, Zach, get ready. we got another caller. Welcome to Artist Review. Uh, who's on the phone today? Jake Miller. Jake, where, what area are you calling from? Uh, I'm on Riverbend. Riverbend. Right around the corner from Giacomo's. Oh, okay. Know where it is. Eating there many times. Uh, we were hoping your girlfriend or your wife would call, but go ahead. Let's hear about it. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> what can we... You know, I, was, I was trying to uh, see if Zach did any um, work other than just frames and uh, small items, if he worked with furniture oh. or did any uh, restoration on furniture, because I have an old uh, armoire that I was trying to find out if somebody could sand down and... Uh, so you bring it back to life. So you're really getting him into the functional part. I was going to say, that's a large object. We're just about ready to go to the bigger pieces that are much more artistic than functional. Some of them still functional. Really, really creative stuff in the other studio uh, that we're going to start on now. But as for actually considering restoring furniture of any type, I don't know. That's going to be up to him because he's, a, I'm sure, a jack of all trades. What would you think about that, Zach? I've never restored furniture per se, but I, I wouldn't imagine it'd be that hard. But um, they, I, know, I do know of a, a restoration place 
in the uptown okay. area for furniture. Yeah, everybody, yeah, I've got several too. So, yeah. uh, but at the same time, why don't you give Zach a call? He'll give you those uh, names if, you, if that's something you're willing to do. But uh, we do appreciate the call. Anything else we can help you with? Uh, no, that I do. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Okay, well, we're really taking a look now. As we mentioned, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the really unusual pieces uh, that Zach has brought in today. And I think uh, if we can get a focus on the first one, which is really almost a, a sculpture of a, a person, uh, it, uh, if we can swing around to that, let's see if we can get that. That's, we've got to move to our other studio, so bear with us, for folks, for a second. Uh, but as we said, while, we, while they're getting ready for us, we're talking to Zach Jacobs, a uh, Tulane student who's doing obviously very, very well, appealing to a lot of people. And that's the key to the thing. He does appear, as we said, at the both the Ferret Street Market and the Broad Street Bazaar on the first and third Saturdays of the month. Okay, I think we're ready, and we're ready to take a look at this. This is going to knock your socks off, folks. Uh, and this is really, a, I guess, a golfer's delight. Maybe it is a golf or a, 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 what do you call those, transformer golfer. Tell us what this is. And what's the title, if there is such? Uh, I call him Jim Bob. And Jim Bob, oh. Jim Bob, because he, he kind of bobs around when you, you knock, when you touch him on his head. He's made of an old, old set of golf clubs that I, I found after the storm. Okay. And uh, a set of forks and knives that was being also being discarded. Some kitchen utility. Right. Uh -huh. uh, sticking with the theme of recycling, I try to, you know, recycle all the things that I use. And... Um, he was just uh, an now, how idea. Tall is, how tall is uh, Jim Bob? Jim Bob's probably about four feet tall. Four feet tall. Now, and, and the bottom, but it's actually uh, the bottom. The stand itself is really golf clubs again, right? For yes. his, uh, his legs and the support. Is that correct? Right. That's right. I use a, a set of bicycle forks for his legs, to where his legs join up to his body there. Ah, okay. And um, and let's see a close up of that face and tell us a little bit more details about the face. The face was, I, um, I had a plastic skull that I was originally thinking about using, and then uh, I sat down and started thinking about it, and my dad told me it'd be really cool if you'd made the skull out of those forks and knives that I had sitting in the back. So uh, I, I thought about it and just went to town and started welding spoons and forks and knives together, and I came up with this the little skull-type deal he's got going on there. and. So for people who like the Terminator, this could be the golfing Terminator, huh? Oh, yeah, totally. Really cool. Okay, and again, what would you say this weighs about? Because, of course, some people are concerned about weight on, uh, you know, on, since it about, is made of all metals. Right, probably around 20 pounds, It is in two pounds. sections, folks, so that's what's good about it. The top half sits on the second part, so that way you, it's right. easy for move. It's much more portable than, than it would look. Okay, well, that's great. So we finished with Jim. Now, the next one is really one of my favorites got some great color and again getting back to the restaurant industry in new orleans fabulous seafood i think we got a crab with a floor de lis is that right that is correct this tell is us a, about the old crab Do you have a name to this crab or is it just crab it's just crab he's just uh crab. he was an idea i had i uh i found this old shovel on the side of the road and that's the actual base we're looking at is yeah, the actual was, shovel is that correct that is correct and i was thinking about you know what could i do with this shovel and i started thinking about shellfish and i started thinking about crabs and i was like well i think i'm gonna build me a crab out of the shovel and he kind of evolved from what he is now and uh he actually has a, a Florida Lee made onto him. That I was a, a old picket off of a fence. Oh, really? Right. The, uh, from an iron, from wrought iron from fence. From a wrought Perfect. iron fence. That is now, correct. what about the tentacles on the side and the claws? What we got going there? That was a. Um, I found a brand new in the box screwdriver set that went through Katrina and it was completely rusted. Somebody had thrown it away. Wow. So I, I took all these little screwdrivers and I used those to make the little uh, the, the little and, prongs that you see sticking off uh -huh, of his legs, legs. there. And the, the claws on them was a, uh, a side of a computer case that I, I cut the computer case up to make the claws. Wow. Yes. That's very inventive. So there you go. So that, that, what was that material? That's like a plastic? Oh, no, that's iron. It's all iron. Oh, oh even the computer case? Even the, com the computer case was made of, a, made of a metal. metal. Right. Okay. 
great looking colors and uh, and let's talk a little bit about size and weight on this. It's a pretty big piece. Again, you got a complete shovel now to handle as you see the yeah. the black part at the top. That's where it ends, where it would normally connect to the uh, to the wood handle. What would you say the weight on this is about, Zach? For Probably those about who, fifteen pounds. Fifteen pounds. And size. Let's talk about size. What do you think in length and? He's probably width? about three feet wide and about two and a half feet deep. He's uh, he's not really. Once he gets on the ground, I, I made him as lawn art to yes. you know go on my front lawn. Oh, you know, think, scare the dogs away. <laughs> scare the dogs away. Right. I think it's great for lawn art and outside, but I. You know, if it wouldn't, I don't know about the heavy, but I think it would look great on the wall as well, or oh, maybe yes. on a some kind of coffee table. You know, sitting uh, with the claws up, but really great. And have any other characters that you've done uh, that we don't have bring to bring today that uh, are oh. similar in nature? I have a I have a couple other characters that I've made uh, smaller stuff. Um, I kind of okay, want to share that with us. What other characters did you do? Um, I have a, a female sculpture as well as the the male sculpture over there and uh i'm working on a butterfly right now okay. as kind of as the crab theme going on and like what that. kind of stuff are you making those out of they're also iron iron, iron. okay all right folks now we're really going to get to his uh this is going to be well hey this is not a sculptor this is a painter or a photographer here we're going to actually see now one of his beautiful his own photographs that he's done and created the frame so just like uh and I believe, I don't know if it's matted or not, I didn't get a chance to look, it looks like it is from here. So let's see if we can pan on over and take a look at this beautiful photograph. So really tell us tell us about it. So really just another dimension to Zach Jacobs, uh, photographer as well as uh, framing the piece. Well, this is a, a photograph that I took at the, the Valence and Dry, Valence and uh, Daniil Cemetery. Okay. It was... Um, it's a great subject because, you know, our cemeteries are so unusual compared to other areas, that, that so is, a lot of people are fascinated by them. That is correct. Go ahead and tell us a little bit more. I was, um, I was trying to capture the day. The day was very gloomy and down. Uh, it was kind of an overcast day. Uh, I shot this using a, a 35 millimeter camera. It's all, all film photos that I shoot. Uh, I processed and developed this photo myself. I, um, I developed, uh, I guess that's developed. Oh, so you it processed it too, but I processed the film and developed. Really are man, Universal Seasons, huh? Yes, sir. I, I learned how to process and develop film at a uh, Tulane. They have a, a, a film department there. Yeah, the in the dark room. Great film department. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that. How about the mat? We got a black mat, or is that a blue? That is blue. black. Black, black mat. mat. Beautiful yes, matted, and then of course. What really adds is a tremendous uh, frame on it. Let's talk, right. As we pan on back, let's uh, talk about that frame because really uh, so many of the old antique things were from gilded frames with a lot of carving. So by using uh, the cornice works and this, this is really a, just a magnificent piece. Tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the frame. The frame is uh, 16 by 20 in size and it's uh, made of old cypress. It was a, a runner board at the bottom of a, a raised house. This would have been okay. like the, wow. the cap board for the bottom toe of the house. Toe board, huh? Right. Is that what we call it? Toe, toe board? board. Running on the baseboard and toe board? Yeah. And uh, it's old cypress. Um, like I said, I, I tried to keep it as original as possible with the paint and the, the old wash on it. Um, another thing with my frames, I, I always check all the paint for lead before I start working. I have uh, lead kits. Wow, um, that's very considerate. Yes. I, uh, so you're saying you're certifying that none of your paints have lead? That is right. I, I, well, now that's hard to believe because... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of wood I don't even pick up off the road because I check it before I even pick it up because I don't want to have the contamination of lead. Lead's well, a, a highly poisonous metal. Oh, it is. And unfortunately, you know, many of our old structures were highly contaminated. In fact, you know, we've had so many uh, studies showing how seriously some of our poor little children have been affected by the uh, uh, by being uh, raised in an environment of lead paint. So aren't you considered? So there you go, folks. So you're getting a true treasure, but at the same time, you're not running any kind of environmental risk to yourself, your family, or anyone to be vying. So now that is really uh, someone who's thought about his art and his craft because he's not only looking at the sheer beauty and the out, and the output but also worrying about the uh, the well-being of his um, admirers and for people who purchase his work all right now we've got uh, now this is uh, last thing over in, in studio a and this is uh, 
it's not a shadow box. It's really a screen, in, uh, I would say, but done with a lot of decorative things. So it almost looks like you would be exhi uh, exhibiting uh, jewelry for sale at your booth. But this is really a great little piece, and it's a stand-up piece with a frame so it could stand up on a table. It doesn't have to be mounted, but it could also be mounted. Tell us about this thing, because it is a screen this, behind this it. This is a right? screen. This is correct. And uh, what it is, I make these for, um, it's a product for women. It's to hang jewelry on, um, hook the earrings, and I also make uh, little hooks to hold necklaces and bracelets and such onto the screens as well. And it's uh, pretty much, you know, to so you can sit back and look at all the jewelry that you have and you're able to, you know, assess what you what you want to wear that day and uh, they're great because you're not digging through a box looking for one earring or the other earring you can hang them side by side you know where each are at and everything's there in place well this is really well thought of so now I'm completely misunderstood I thought you were actually creating a piece of art using female jewelry and displaying it as an entity itself but well, you're no, saying I this is the uh, really a, an aesthetic way of organizing a uh, lady's jewelry or men's jewelry of some regard so that way it won't be just all entangled or displayed in a box kind of way like I say where you have to always jumble through the looks of them so this is so you can actually get a, a just a blank screen framed for you to actually clip on your own individual um, jewelry is that correct that is correct and how how is the jewelry actually attached to the screen it's um it's just in the holes of the screen they just you hang the hooks through the holes in the screen um the but I mean, like i mean not everyone has hooks i mean like for a lady with a pair of earrings how would she uh how would she attach that to the screen well earrings with backs on them uh a lot of the times what uh, they can do is they have I have hooks that you hook into the screen and you can hang stuff off of the hooks. Oh, okay, themselves. so you're actually providing the hooks. I do. I provide oh, ten okay. with the frame. So that, that ten. So that's what I'm saying. So uh, I mean, how would one somebody know where you know to get uh, the proper thing to attach it to? That's why I thought it was a picture. Well, we're going to come back and answer. Uh, I had one more question on it, but w once again we're just uh, those phones are ringing and a ringing. Uh, welcome to Artist Review. We've got Zach Jacobs and Bob Bachelman, the host, and we're, who's on the phone and where are you calling from, please? Uh, my name is Chris, and I'm calling from Uptown. Uptown, Chris. Okay. What can we answer for you? Um, I would like to know. I would like to know if that picture. That picture that he had with those two. The photograph of the, the photograph of the ladies in the cemetery. Yeah. Uh huh. What about it, Chris? Um. I was wondering. I was wondering if if you are about children's hospital too. Uh, I'm sorry if we did what with children in the hospital. I'm, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you said. Help help them out. Well, uh, when you say help them out again, uh, um, that means by. A picture. Uh huh. Well, so, he makes pictures for children's house. Uh huh. Well, I'm sure if, you know. Two things. One, um, you know, you can uh, bring your own photograph to to Zach. In other words, if someone has a his or her own, whether it's a family portrait or whether it's something of uh, any nature, you can bring that, and he'll create the frame and the mat for you, or. He's going to take subjects that he likes. He's again, he's not primarily a photographer. This is just another avenue that he does. So, if he sees something that inspires him to take a photograph, then he's going to complete the whole package, not just do the photograph, but present it in a beautiful frame so that way uh, when you if you're interested as much as he is, you got the whole package. You don't have to go look for another container to put it in. But um, I, I, I think that's all we could answer in that regard. But, I mean, you know, to help the children, again, it would be whether he would be interested in doing something. And I'm sure, you know, we ask all of our, it's one thing we do here in review is that we ask not only our artists, but also our restaurants to help out in some of the galas to uh, donate a piece 
so that when they do fundraising, so if there's uh, if you get if you're involved with Children's Hospital, you can maybe contact uh, Zach and perhaps he can do a donation to that so that they can raise some money. Okay, we have another caller. Is that right? Uh, who's on the phone, please? Hello. Oh, hi. Um, my name is Agatha. Thank you for calling, Agatha. I was wondering, do we not appeal to any ladies? What's the deal? Oh, well, actually, that's really funny that you say that because um, me and my two friends are just watching the show. Okay. And, um, what area what are you what, Excuse me. What area are you calling from, Agatha? Uh, the Broadmoor area. Bro- we got another Broadmoor person. Very good. Mm-hmm. What can we tell you or ask any question? Okay, well, a couple of... Um, Minutes ago, y'all were showing the singer cover of Shadow Box, and I was like, we had yeah, we had a couple of shadow boxes. One of them, uh, kind of male oriented. Well, done, really, because of female. Oh yeah, I meant, to, I meant to like jewelry box one. Oh well, okay, that was not a shadow box per se. The last okay. one, we, that's the one we're still talking about. This is interesting because it's actually a screen that is framed, like a, a screen on your house on your window. That he allow that he provides hooks so that you can do two things: one, organize your jewelry, and two, actually make a piece of art. So that way you'll have it handy on your dresser, and whenever you want to wear a particular earring or a necklace or bracelet, you got it right there. But at the same time, well, yeah, got- I mean it's really funny that you say that because I like the jewelry. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, that's what I asked him in the beginning. I was of the, I was of the understanding that he was just doing a piece of art, taking some jewelry and putting it together. But his right. Part- well, I mean, I know that you can't say if y'all are selling them, you know, on the air because it's not a commercial show right. and it's public access. However, I was wondering if I could call back later and see if the jewelry is for sale. You, you certainly can. So, uh, uh, Zach, let me just ask this for the lady. That particular piece that you have, you would you would merchandise it as is if somebody wanted with that jewelry. Or, do, or you have to have that for your display. Uh, the jewelry is actually made by my girlfriend, Casey. Oh, and, come on uh, now. Come on. We have to have Casey on another time. Uh-huh. All right. Well, there you go. What you can do is... Call back at the end, or, or even better, we guarantee. Okay, great. Uh, we'll guarantee you this. Pay attention to the end. We're going to give. It's okay to give out your. Oh yes, totally. We're going to give out his phone number. You can call him directly, but also if you want to email him, we'll give that out again. That was. Uh, you got a pencil? Do you want to do it by email? Yeah, I, I got the email. So okay. Right. Well, like I said, right before the end of the show, before we sign off, we will give his phone number, and you can call him directly on your own at your own time. Okay. Sounds great. I guess we really appreciate it. Thanks Y'all for your have interest. Have a wonderful day. Thank All right, you. you too, dear. Bye bye. All right, uh, so that there we go. I knew we had to have something to draw the female interest, huh? Ne- nearly <laughs> the. Awesome. Okay, got some outtake there, huh? Uh-huh. All right, <laughs> can't beat that. Well, folks, this is, this has been a bang up show with regard to the calls. Again, we're talking to Zach Jacobs, Tulane student. Obviously, it's good that we bring these young folk in, and especially someone who's so talented. He's doing not only functional art, but uh, restorative art. He's doing uh, creative ideas uh, and actually recycling a lot of stuff here in the city to make it uh, attractive. And a lot of people have gotten caught on with that concept since uh, Katrina, that they are, uh, you know, making things from recycled things. So that's why we were really pleased. But instead of just making Florida leaves like a lot of folks are, Zach has taken it to a whole different stream with regard to concepts. In fact, when we come up with the next two pieces, which is the last two pieces of the day, this is the first piece that I saw of his, which is totally away from what we've seen, except for maybe... uh, Jim Bob or the crab, and what we're going to do? I'm going to ask uh, Zach to go ahead and pick up that uh, his version, and then after we do his, we're going to take a look at mine, which is the one that drew me to him. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Cameraman, let's take a look and see what Zach has in his hands for display. Tell us about that, Zach. This is a, a motorcycle helmet for uh, when I'm riding around town. It's uh, I've taken bullet shells and I've fastened the bullet shells to the helmet to make a, a, a mohawk. To make and a what? A mohawk. Oh, a, wow. I didn't a, even... A helmet hawk. Uh, a helmet didn't... hawk. All right. Now you're going. Now you're getting creative. You're getting good titles as well as uh, looks. 
Okay, so it's actually a true motorcycle helmet. It's a true motorcycle helmet. That is correct, and it's a uh, real bullet shells on the helmet. They're uh, they're brass. <coughs> So over time, they will, uh, you know, tarnish, tarnish. as brash will, and they'll have the age, the peel to them. The more you ride around. Yeah. Now that piece could be a little controversial, you know, in our unfortunate climate that we have here. But at the same time, uh, it's still a great reflection. It certainly does look like a mohawk, and it's really good. It maybe. Uh, you know, maybe you could think of in the future doing something additional like that, another hairstyle with something other than the bullet casings in case, you know, right. hopefully you don't get any negative feedback on it. I think it's a great look, but at the same time, you know, I know that's a very sensitive subject here in our city because of, unfortunately, our high crime rate. But the one that drew my attention to, to Zach is the one I'm holding and, and really proud of. And again, it's a uh, fantastic motorcycle helmet. It's not that nice black it's got a lot of look, and what more appropriate than uh, to our restaurant reviewers who are watching, but once again, taking cutlery and making a, a tremendous headpiece on it. Now we're going to see if we can get a little, should I turn it or I want to keep it state? All right. Tell us a little bit about this one, Zach, because this is really, like I said, this is what really did it for me, and asked me to, uh, to said I got to get this kid on the uh, young man on excuse me on the show because I was really intrigued. Tell us about this, please. This is uh this is my helmet I ride around with. Uh, when I'm riding you actually with, ride with this. I ride with it. It's um I'm not sure about the legality behind it, but uh, I bring it to bike night and uh, I get tremendous looks from every rider, <laughs> whether young or old. Um, the old timers always come up and they're always like, you know, little knucklehead kid, what you doing, you know and. It just it, get, it turns a lot of heads when people see it, and it's it's a it's a showstopper. Tell us a little bit about how you actually the technical part of how you were able to affix the cutlery to the actual helmet. Well, I, the cutlery themselves are stainless steel. So uh, what I had to do was I had to take a piece of stainless steel flat bar, and I had to roll the flat bar in a plate roller to get the curve of the helmet. Once I had the curve of the helmet with the flat bar, I uh, proceeded to welding the forks so, and knots. So we can show now, this is what you're talking about, you actually made this this welding bar all the way up to the top, is that correct? Right, that is correct. And then you proceeded to actually weld the cutlery to that bar, is that, that correct? That is correct, yes. Now tell me again, you know, like you say in the beginning about the legality of it, how about what I'm concerned about, not so much on that one, but this one with regard to the drag coefficient, not that I'm uh, anything to do with that, but I mean, what happens with the wind and all going through here? Does it really uh, well, tossle your head back and give you neck ache or what? No, when I ride my bike, I, I don't get my bike over 25, so I, oh, I stay real slow in the boy. city. And uh, I, I cruise around, I putt putt, as uh, the old timers say, and uh, I'm not in no big hurry whenever I'm going anywhere. So this is really your, should be your, and is your calling card. That is because, right. Because uh, this is like slapping the sign, uh, you know, your business on the side of your car, but instead doing it on your scooter or your uh, bike. Excuse me for insulting you by saying scooter, because I'm sure that's not, not where you drive. But uh, what a great piece. Uh, what a really, Do you have a title for it or something like you call the other one something? Or any uh, not that it needs one, but I'm just no, asking. No, it's just a mohawk. Uh, helmet hawk, I guess. Another, another mohawk hawk. head piece. Okay. Really stunning. And folks, um, we've been talking. I'm going to set this down, and we're going to wrap it up for the day. We've been talking to Zach Jacobs. Zach, as we said, is a native of New Orleans, that's right? That's correct. I want to make sure I didn't get that Born wrong. Grew up in Gentilly, unfortunately, uh, but nonetheless, let's say unfortunately, we're tired of saying unfortunately post-Katrina. Fortunately, his family has rebuilt in Gentilly, because, you know, we need to bring all our neighborhoods back, and Gentilly was such a great place, so we're really glad that uh, he's back. And the most important place, his studio, which is his garage studio, was able to be salvaged and rebuilt so he can create some of these fabulous concoctions for you. <clears throat> As we mentioned, uh, Zach, uh, we're going to give out his phone number and uh, his email address just before we close. But if you'd like to see him, unfortunately he doesn't have a website yet, but I think with all the uh, attention that we've drawn today to him, he certainly would be well served to try and see about getting that and getting some of these pieces on and actually even merchandising, but at least getting a little more visibility through the Internet. So I think he'll certainly do that uh, as a short-term, if not long-term, project. But in the interim, 
You can see, once, as we said, at two of our neighborhood markets on the first Saturday of the month, uh, usually between 11 and 5 or 4, the Ferret Street Market, which is really the first one that came up after Katrina, on Ferret, one block off of Napoleon. And uh, a lot of booths of not only art makers like himself, painters, sculptors, um, but wonderful uh, food uh, preparers. And uh, like I said, it's, great, it's a great day with music and all kind of entertainment. And then on the third sun, Saturday, excuse me, of the month at the newest uh, uh, neighborhood, and that is the Broad Street Bazaar. And that's on Broad right off of the old parking lot of Swagman's or Robes. Okay, let's go ahead now and give out the email for those who maybe didn't get it. If you wanted to contact Zach by email, it's Z for Zach, so just Z Jacobs, J A C O B S, one word, Z Jacobs at our ampersand, Tulane, T U L A N E dot E D U. And Zach has agreed to go ahead and give out his cell. I presume it's your cell. Cell, so, yes. Okay, is uh, it a 504 number? Totally, 504. Okay, 504, give it to him. 430. 430. 3252. 3252. So it's 504 430 3252. Uh, now, please just call him about re legitimate business. None of you ladies who are looking to date. This is not an advertising service, it is strictly. Uh, for him to be able to create something great for yourself or your or your family. Uh, once again, we hope, and we, I think we have shown that uh, art really triggers the uh, community. We had a, a pre previous one painter who sold a piece of art right here, uh, right after the show was over. So uh, if that helps, uh, that, that serves our purpose with regard to being an economic generator by showing the great work that our citizens are doing and our, and our people. So again, remember, stay tuned to Artist Review. It's uh, the always scheduled on the last Wednesday of the month in the time slots for Restaurant Review. And for those who are going to watch us next week, Restaurant Review, we have scheduled a great new little cafe on Maple Street called Chill Out Cafe which is Thai food during the day and night and great American breakfasts. The week after, a fantastic new Val restaurant called Boucherie, and it's replacing uh, Iris on Jeanette. Uh, again, the last, for programming note, the last two weeks of the month of February, I'll be out because I'm having some surgery, but uh, we've got some great packed uh, information. Okay, until then, uh, look for us. Uh, on the restaurants, on the restaurant uh, again next Monday, excuse me, next Wednesday uh, for Chill Out Cafe. And unfortunately, we will not have an artist review in February because of not only my surgery, but also it being Ash Wednesday. And we are, we're probably not going to be in any mood after Mardi Gras, as you all know. But come back to us for March. At the end of March, we've got March through, I believe, June totally filled up. And we've even got some September. So we've got some great artists for you so of all types of genres so please come back and see us once again we'll see you at the restaurants next week uh, with restaurant review at chill out cafe and until such time uh, it's bob bockelman and thanks for watching